Wait, are they adding play? Wait, wait, what? The YouTube? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on, guys? Is this some kind of video? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Have you not what? seen the video? Wait, guys, can we? I'm, I'm, I'm muting the Sorokas. Guys, are you guys ready for some kind of video about Guild Wars 2? Let's watch this video together, stream. You can expect more great things from us as we move directly from Season 4 into Season 5. This means more engaging stories that expand the world of Tyria, new maps to dive into and explore, and more gameplay features that change the way the game is experienced. We've already introduced the Roller Beetle Mount in Episode 3, added a new raid, fractals, and more, and we're going to continue this season's story and add new feature content in the coming months. We've got yes. another raid, a new fractal, oh. and one of my favorite features of the season, Sun's Refuge. It's a personal character instance oh. in a familiar oh. and historic location oh. that goes all the way back to Wait. the original Guild Wars. You'll be able to rebuild oh, the settlement exactly with this opportunities is. to unlock yes, NPCs, collections, yeah. and rewards. And all of this without a monthly subscription fee. They're adding Garrison's voice, Farmville! The yeah. of this season is going to be one heck of a ride. We've really got this hurtling cannonball of a story that is so powerful that it needs to keep going. The most oh, yeah, epic stuff like, we've ever done for Living World is saying. coming in season four. We're pushing the limits of what the game can do and what yeah. we can do with the story. Yep. And we're excited Absolutely. to see this pay off in cool ways for you, the players. And to keep the story going into the future this with season five. Ah, that doesn't mean there's no expansion, you newbies. Not in yeah. that context at all. You well, not according to reactionary, Reddit. <laughs> you reactionary Reddit plebs. Come on, that's not what you're saying at all with that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's not yeah, that's absolutely not what he's saying with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like people are speculating yeah. now that Living World season four will no, only have three episodes no, no, no. and yeah. No, really no, 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 no. That is nonsense. No, that that's not what <laughs> you were saying at all. I, I imagine it will be an expansion uh, into season five. Absolutely. Uh, I actually really like this. Uh, I think this is very good. Uh, this is precisely what Arena need to do more. Um, of actually, it's very slick. It's showing cool things. It's showing the raid. It's showing the the, the you know the end game content. And this looks pretty cool, we... right? This is like a gorse. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Love the cutscenes. The Guild Wars Two is really beautiful. It's showing very pretty parts of the game. It's very cinematic. Uh, it's very professionally done. I love it. Like the guys are concise. They're saying good things. Mike Z looking fucking slick, dude. Okay, what can I say? Um, they use the word meaty. Okay, I mean that's. And to us, I mean, that's amusing, but I mean, yeah, it is pretty meaty if you think about it, I guess. If you're a more casual player, it's like a TV show. They understand their game very well. The fact that they're adding, like, a Farmville garrison meme, from like, from World of Warcraft, they, they know their fucking player base, okay? They know their player base. This is exactly what people want, honestly. Um, some kind of player housing meme. But that actually is really interesting, because it means the expansion won't be player housing, right? And that is interesting, okay? In so general. Yeah, play housing, exactly. I bet Matter will like that shit. You know, yeah. you can probably decorate as well. You know, you can... Yeah. All right, so hang on. Let's, um, let's, let's quickly open this other interview here, then. Is this a full interview about... Where, where does, where's the good stuff? Oh, here, yeah. About... Let's watch all of it. We were... Or is it... Oh, is it only good at the end, guys? Or is it good now? It's rather a sleeper until the end. Okay. You guys have to tell me though. When we is launched it good the game, now? we had grand plans no. for where Guild Wars 2 would go. Uh, it's the continuation of a long running franchise. Uh, okay. And we wanted to make sure that we were paying homage to the original, but still bringing something new and fresh to the game. Uh, six years later, the journey has been long and fun. And yep. uh, we are just reinvigorated by continuing that legacy. Um, we have visited uh, iconic locations from Guild Wars 1 throughout mm -hmm. our time in the world uh, and through some of our expansions. Uh, but at the same time, we're starting to get to the point where we have already visited some new areas and started to spark the interest of exploration and, and going beyond uh, what we've already known for the franchise. Uh, the community okay, is what th you know empowers us to continue to do this. Uh, and to see how friendly they are, how much fair. support they have for each other, uh, and for us as a studio has just been wonderful. And uh -huh. it just invigorates us and pushes us further each day trying to uh, do more than we did previously, do better, uh, and uh, just bring to life this vision of such a, a global community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Such a compelling. Hit me with it, Mike. Way. 
What's you? Oh no 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 no, no one cares. Um, oh. actually no, it is it, from the very it is interesting what he will say to that. Actually, let's have a let's let's do let's click on let's, let's go on that. Where did, where was that? Yeah, here we go. Okay. We knew from the very beginning there was something special about Guild Wars 2, uh, from the, the way that players interacted. We built the game from the ground up about being very cooperative, about uh, you being excited to see another player, whether it was in World vs. World and it was an ally, or as an enemy that you wanted to kill, whether it was in competitive PvP and it was somebody you wanted to, to stomp, or just in the open world, in a partyless system, that you could just find somebody that was trying mm. to do the same content you were, yep. and because you were playing alongside them, you both got the same amount of loot, you both got your own roles, there was no kill stealing, and you were just excited about finding other people. And it started building communities. Yeah, sure. Uh, and from the very beginning, we knew that what, just from the first couple steps and the first couple months that this was something that uh, was going to bl blossom into something that we saw uh, today. And what the? What? What? The? This is an unfortunate. This is really unfortunate of him that he got frozen like that. Uh, Topic EU gifts a tier three. Wait, what is my internet? What is this? I can't even play. Interacted. Right. We built Just the game from the ground man. up about being tier three sub cooperative, nice. about uh, you being excited to see another player, whether it was in world versus world and it was an ally or as an enemy that you wanted to kill, whether it was right. in competitive PvP and it was somebody you wanted to, to stomp, and or just in again. the open world so in a partyless system that you could just find somebody that was trying to do the same content you were, and because you were playing alongside them, you both got the same amount of loot, you both got your own roles, there was no kill stealing, mm -hmm. and you were just excited about finding other yeah. people. And it started building communities, uh, and from the very beginning we knew, that what, just from the first couple steps and the first couple months, that this was something that uh, was going to bl blossom into something that we saw uh, today, and, and just the general support that we see for, for the overall game. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty fair. I think that's true. It's something interesting about Guild Wars 2 that it does actually do that. Um, so you don't screw each other over, right? For six years, we've been iterating on the living world structure, uh, releasing new content uh, at various forms of cadence, uh, at various forms <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> of depths of story. <laughs> and we've always strived to make ourselves okay. better than the previous season. Uh, as we are starting to move towards the end of season four, we're ratcheting up the encounters, the, the dangers that players are going to face, the threat that they're going to have to, to overcome, uh, and something that's going to force all players to come together in order to to achieve. Uh, and we're excited because we're going to be moving directly from Season 4 into Season Ooh. 5 uh, in a, a new storyline that's going okay. to continue where we leave off to uh, continue the, the overall arc of the narrative of Guild Wars 2 uh, and start to bring answers to some of the bigger questions that we've left unanswered. See, that isn't, you see, right, so that is interesting, oh, this is going to be a fun one, so now that is interesting, the fact that they say that it is going to go straight through does kind of imply that there's going to be no break, so, so what if season five is just basically at the same time as the expansion, so suppose, because I, I could interpret that as, so season four ends, right, then a month or two late, month or two later, you get the expansion, then it's straight into season five, I can see that, right? That can happen. So I mean, like, uh, like a season five update, like on the release day, or almost, like maybe a month after. Because the thing is, right? I think that's actually what they intended to do with Path of Fire and Heart of Thorns, actually, but they just didn't execute it well. I wonder if they want to go straight through, actually, because I don't think that. Because think, think about it, season five is not season five isn't happening for another eight months, right? I mean, there's like this idea that maybe um, season four has like won't have six episodes um, because they never specifically said it's gonna have six episodes. But I mean, I might say something. If you check the infographic, they said that they're halfway, half in the season four. Yeah, so it's three episodes. It's gonna be six. I think it's gonna be six episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be six it's episodes, five. and then they'll I be just really right, yeah. Shh. Yeah, there'll be an expansion, right? And then it will move on to the next season immediately. I actually really like that. That If that's true and they actually do that, that will be so good for the game, in my opinion. It will, it will really make the game feel very alive when they release a new expansion, right? It's, it's really huge. Really, really huge. If they can do that, that will be massive. Massive for Arena if they can execute that well. That's very hype. Mike Z, I'm holding that's you to that, good. son. All right, next one. How do you balance PvP? Not Let's at all. Let's go. How do you do it, Mike Z? Uh, balance is always a tricky one yep. because uh, it's not just about one game type. We have 
probably dozens of game types at this point from you know the competitive side of PvP. Uh, players have started to push themselves for more interesting game modes. Like they've created their own game modes that we try and support in the ways that we can, uh, even within our World versus World or GBG. And then you add in, okay, we have competitive raids, our fractals, which are our com more of our competitive dungeon scene, uh, obviously in the open world, and so all these things. So when you're looking at balance as a whole, we want to make sure that we have viability for specs in different game modes, and that players feel like they have an interesting choice, and it's not necessarily, I need to reroll a new character to be, um, uh, to feel like I can participate in the content, uh, that I still have an option and a, and a meaningful choice when I'm looking at my spec or my build. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's a really interesting one. It is kind of a, how do you, it, it, it shows that they actually do try to take these things into consideration. Um, I think that maybe doesn't quite show, especially with regards to maybe World vs. World. That's pretty questionable. Um, they do definitely bounce around high-end PvE, though. We see stuff like like Weaver getting nerfed, right? Like You do see that. But, I mean, I don't know. Like, to, say, to say that they're, they're trying to claim that they bounce around GVG is a little... Ooh. Do they bounce around Open World? I mean, I don't know if they do that. I mean, they certainly bounce for the lower level because they've nerfed stuff like D8. They've nerfed stuff like... Um, They've really nerfed Scourge a lot, and they probably they'll probably nerf stuff like Mirage. Um, and they do make easy builds. They make stuff like Core Guard exists. So they do try and bounce around the lower level, but I, I thought they are power creeping. They have also Topic U gifted ten subs. This man is just ridiculous. So it's a very interesting <laughs> statement there by Mike. I, I I love the fact that he said that. I, I love it. Um, I hope they can deliver on it a bit better than what he suggested they were. Well, what they are now, because I don't think they actually do that particularly well. But I think maybe they try. You know what? Maybe they try, and I'm going to give benefit of the doubt, guys, because in these situations, benefit of the doubt is always good. Okay? So, how to... Oh, how to play... <laughs> how to players influence Guild Wars 2. Now, this is going to be a spicy one. Okay? Yeah, topic of you is God, pretty much. Oh, yeah, I will. I, I'll read it, Eddie. I'll read it. I'll read the article. We'll show the article as well. Uh, I'll have to watch the video. Um... We are, well, there's a couple of things that we do in terms of how we listen to our players. Um, we're obviously monitoring things in terms of the online forums and the discussions. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us play the game, so you'll forums. see us with our developer tags up because yeah. we want to have these, the, the individual player interactions. Obviously, we're reaching out to press like you guys. Um, we also come to like Gamescom, we have fan events and things like that because we want to hear directly from the players. Um, and a lot of that comes from uh, listening to their desires listening to what they like, what they don't like, what they find more challenging or more difficult than they would have expected, and allows us to kind of uh, use that as feedback as part of our iteration cycle. With Living World, we always have three teams in flight that are working on the next episode and leapfrogging each other. And so because of this, it allows us to, to pivot pretty well in terms of, cool, we found something that players really enjoy, and we want to make sure that we're either iterating on that and digging deeper, or we found something that didn't necessarily resonate with them, and we need to find a better way to either communicate through messaging or find a better way that allows them to feel that immersive pull uh, and that connection to the, the characters or the content that they didn't necessarily find. Um, and so through all those multiple channels, allowing us on uh, the rapid cadence that we are, allows us to kind of make sure that we're adjusting for those um, and some of the, the bigger ones we've been looking at more recently for this, this season have been how we've been developing features. The expectation that um, uh, with Path of Fire we had five mounts that came out and there was a lot of speculation that if we were going to do another mount it was going to come with another box expansion. And for us it was about like, well, that's not necessarily what we want to do. Uh, for us, mounts have been tools and companions for you to go along in the ride. And so with episode three of this latest season of Living World, we introduced the sixth mount because it made sense for us from a gameplay perspective, from a story perspective, and a, uh, an overall cohesion perspective. And so that was where for us, it's, it's allowing to us to look and go, hey, look, we don't need to wait for a box product to give players new things, new toys, new um, ways to exp experience our content. Uh, and we can just find ways to do it uh, yeah. organically through our, our, our production methodology. Um, we've also tried to look at how we release uh, raids, fractals, updates. Let me stuff you right there, Mike. <laughs> you know what? What are you saying here, buddy? Uh... <laughs> Oh, wait, why was well, World versus World in PvP? Wait, what? And make it so that uh, we are encouraging players to uh, explore these these content styles and that we're preventing them from growing stale.
<laughs> All right, okay. It is a very good thing that PC Games N don't know shit about Kill Wars Two. I, I, what? I, I mean, that 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 is um, a, a lovely piece of PR there. Like, are you joking, Mike? Are you trying to are you trying to make a meme here? I mean, and yeah, okay, so. They've tried to look at raids. I mean, honestly, like the raid release schedule in Path of Fire has been a clown fiesta. Fractal has been a clown fiesta. When they talked, to, when they sort of like, how to play as influence Guild Wars two, and they, they were talking about, um, they were talking about how people find stuff too difficult or like it was challenging. Well, it seems weird that they would say that, but then they haven't um, reduced the difficulty of stuff like raids, right? It just seems a little odd that they would. They would um they would do stuff like that, right? It just seems a little unusual. The cadence is is obviously they haven't really fixed it yet. They haven't sorted it out. Hope maybe they have now. Maybe they have now. And they've said in the recent AMA that it's every three months, basically like every other you get every other one. I mean, fair, right? Fair enough. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. Maybe they maybe the reason this raid is taking something because they are actually doing what he said. If what Mike said there is true. I would expect some kind of easy mode, right? I would expect some kind of difficulty scaling in raids, okay? Because if they say we talk to the players, we're trying to get people engaged with the content, engaged with the other game modes, uh, then they're looking to increase accessibility, guys, okay? Uh, I mean, that would be good. That would be perfect, I think. But honestly, the way the game is right now, I, I can't really agree with that statement. Um, I think there is actually a barrier to a lot of game modes. I think the way the game is in PvP is also a bit of a barrier because you just get burst. Everything is very bursty. Like we, it's honestly more than that now, thanks to like Rev and Power Reaper coming up. Like you're just going to get one shot by stuff that you can't really see properly. Um, well, I mean, Reaper's very well telegraphed, but still, right? I, I don't know. Like World versus World again. I think there does need to be a bit more directed, and it. it needs to like explain what you need to do a bit better. I think people do get lost in that game mode unless they have a guide. Um, coming to the game they don't really know what the fuck's going on they don't really get it and if they play at a weird time they get screwed i mean if they are looking to increase accessibility then yes amazing but i'm not i don't know dude um i i don't know about that one um an easier encourages character yeah because encourages casual players and the thing is guys if they try to reduce the barrier to entry into raids more casual players play raids suddenly it's more money if a read net invests in raids guys it really is as simple as that i realize that a lot of people don't a lot of us don't want to think about the bottom line okay um, but it's reality, right? Like money makes the world turn. So you have to at some point say that, you know, you've got to make it, it has to be worth it to invest in this technology. And I don't know, um, when, are it, when I think Mike here, he's trying to give a very good impression. Obviously he is, a, it is his game. Uh, but I don't want to say it's, 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 it's not, none of what you said is actually a lie. Right. But it, it's, um, it, it's, it's PR speak, right? It's, it's not. It's not untrue. They because he, he uses stuff like we've we've looked at, we've tried to, right? And you know that's probably true. But has it actually come to fruition? Maybe not just yet. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. I, the word like a lie is very harsh. It's very, he, he's just trying to give a good impression of the game. It's very understandable, of course. It's a Gamescom. It's a PR event, and he's trying to make it look good. Um, but yeah, say, saying nothing by saying something, kind of. Yeah. Um, it, it, the sentiment is important though the sentiment is very very important uh and if they are trying then i'll believe them when i talked to mike z he came i talked to him last year at gamescom uh he seemed very genuine and really looking to actually do the best job that he possibly can with regards to the game so you know what i i, I believe him when he says this i very much hope that they they deliver on this if if that's true awesome if it's not then i guess it's kind of sad yeah yeah, raids. I would love the cadence to improve if they listen to the playbase with regards to difficulty. Changing accessibility towards all the game modes, making it very accessible to everyone, I think would be extremely good for the game, especially for the game modes that uh, you know. If you guys are on Twitch, we're probably a little more. Um, uh, if you're on Twitch, it's probably a little more, like, more hardcore, more towards the less casual side, of course. But for if you want, hey, good night, topic. See you later. If you want us to like, have access to all this good content, you have to cater to the. To the masses as well, right? You're giving me the PR speak too? No, I'm just, not, I'm trying not to be a dick. That's all. Um, there's no, there's no need to assume the worst when it comes to, we're already quite cynical, right? Okay, guys, we're already cynical. Uh, so there's no need to be a dick about it. Um, and you, you've got to give them a shot, right? Because the thing is, this sort of thing is great. Like when they're actually communicating and saying stuff, we need to indicate to them that this is what we want and this is what we like. 
okay? And we will respond to it without like massive toxicity, okay? Uh, <laughs> and not just like flame them really hard, okay? I don't know. There you go. That's why I think on that statement, it's PR speak, but it, it, if, if it's true, right, then it's very good, all right? What's to come in season four? Uh, with season four, with the very next episode, we're introducing Sun's Refuge. It's a nice callback to a, a really iconic GW1 location um, that al allow us to uh, use as a springboard moving forward for the next uh, uh, confrontation, the next struggle that players are going to be going through. And so it, it allows us to build a location where players will get to know the lore if they haven't necessarily been caught up to speed. It will give them a chance to uh, earn new unique rewards. Uh, and in this case, we have an upgradable armor set. Um, which is something that players have been wanting to have more choices in terms of their customization uh, and being able to earn more of the rewards in game that they uh, through progression and um, and feeling that 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 uh, connection to the the game systems that are there. Uh, we're also in introducing another mastery, uh, which means that it's more of our horizontal progression that we introduced with our expansions, so that uh, players who are just coming to the to Guild Wars Two won't have to you know, worry about an additional level cap that has been raised. It's more about finding new ways to explore the game and uh, um, see the content in a new way. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so another upgradable armor set with regards to the living story. I like it. They are listening, see? This is what I mean. That's why you got to give them a little bit of, a little bit of, um, yeah. And more rewards in game. Everybody is playing a trick. See, they are listening, guys, right? Pay attention. And this is why you gotta give them a bit of credit, you know, guys? Come on, man. You know, you gotta put give them a little bit of credit. It's just gonna take them one year twice to it get might, that upgradable armor set in the game. Might take a little while, but yeah, that's cool. I like that. Um, and I mean, we, we didn't really learn anything particularly new except for the new armor set there. It's like, ah, yeah, you know, we, we, we do the lore, we'll do the, the story, it's gonna be progressive, there's gonna be masteries, except we know all that, really. Um, so yeah, a uh, but. New updates, guys. New updates. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. I like it. Where will Guild Wars 2 be in another six years? Probably on the back burner, like Guild Wars 1, and then it's Guild we'll Wars 3. We'll have another two raid wings. Oh, <laughs> right, here we go. The first six years have been a thrilling ride. Uh, in another six years, I hope that uh, we are still making uh, just as amazing, just as iterative, just as groundbreaking content in terms of That's a bit ambitious, Mike. and and the play style. I want people to uh, look back fondly at where we've come from. Um, uh, I want people to remember uh, the friendships that they've made along the way. Uh, Guild Wars 2 is a game that is the foundation for building a very unique community, and I want the community to stay together uh, and have fond remembrances of what they've experienced together and beyond, uh, and, and take that to the real world. That is true. Uh, absolutely, this game does create communities in, in, a, in a remarkable way, actually. I completely agree with that sentiment. Uh, Mike is completely right here. Uh, this game is a very good social experience if you want it to be. He's absolutely right. Honestly, you know what? Are we being cynical about this? But hell, like maybe maybe they, this is like their World of Warcraft and they actually keep this going instead of doing Guild Wars 3. I highly doubt it because I think they probably want to do some kind of engine rework and relaunch. But... Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, that he, he's right there, and again, an, another great sentiment. I do think that the the communities and the friends I've met in this game are unlike any other, actually. Um, yeah, Salt is the best guild Aww. in the entire world, guys. Salt, yeah, yeah. Mister wow. Guilds, the best. Okay. I would say that is a good interview with Mike Z. Okay, right, but we've got an MMORPG article to read. So let's read that. All right. So, six years ago, Guild Wars 2 released. After a ridiculous amount of hype... Wait, what, are they like roasting the game? After a ridiculous amount of hype and promise to play the way we wanted, nothing's quite seemed off the table. A raid net took Tyria and turned it from a single-player instance into a massive, sprawling world that lived and breathed. Living world truly brought this to the fore. That's an interesting way of... Interesting language choice. It took characters we loved and took them on a journey. Introduced new heroes, fantastic films, you know, uh, and changed the face <laughs> of the world. After six years, Arena... Uh, after six years, Arena Net... Wait. After six years, Arena Net of game-changing events. We got some time to sit down to our boy Mike Z. 
game director, and Elizabeth Cardi, uh, the brand manager, global manager, global brand manager, brand manager? to talk what? How, <laughs> talk about how Living World has changed. Uh, uh, wait, talk about Living World has changed. Wait, they read and tell stories. Why did you decide to continue the Living World and go straight from season four to season five rather than say work on an expansion in the background? Ooh. Ooh, yeah. interesting. No expansion. There, there's a number of different reasons why it made sense for us to do this. A lot of it comes down to just how we're operating because Living World is so iterative. Because Living World is so iterative, it's easier for us to adapt based on player feedback. We have a lot of the core systems already in place that we can build off of. I mean, we kind of saw going from Heart of Thorns to Path of Fire. Path of Fire's mounts was an extension of the Mastery System, so we can continue to play with the Mastery System in a way that we just couldn't originally have envisioned when we were first designing them beforehand. So... This is just another reason why it made sense for us right now to say, hey, well, season four, we come to a pretty amazing point right now. We have a huge climax coming soon, and we know that we can move directly from our four to five and continue that pace. We can continue that storyline because there are still a lot of unanswered questions in terms of where Tyria is going with the lore. See, that does actually very strongly imply that there won't yep. be an expansion. Now, that does say that uh, from, from, yep. from Mike Z there. Now, that is, that's not necessarily bad. The only thing I would say that is bad is I'm really going to miss no new Elite Specs. Um, yeah. So we're actually looking for not an expansion in 2019. We're looking at an expansion in 2020. If they're going, maybe they aren't. Do, are they doing another expansion? Probably not. That's maybe it. Not. That's, That's gonna be a lot of work to do. That expansion. might be it. Yeah. Maybe they'll just rework everything. It's no kind of like getting new ones. No specs. Just do Guild Wars three at this point, well, or a new IP no, entirely. But I mean, the, the, yeah. We have, we're, look, look at this, okay? So we're, we're already kind of in a loner as well, by the way. But also, I mean, look at this stuff, right? Um, Tampa, whatever. Yeah, hey, uh, we're, with this stuff, it could be the case that um, they are working on an expansion and doing this. He doesn't explicitly say there is no expansion, right? Uh, uh, but I, I, it does seem to imply it, doesn't it, actually? It really yes. does. Very I wonder if they would ever add elite specs without a full expansion. Maybe they aren't looking to sell more expansions. Maybe they look. I wonder if they would ever do that. If they would add a specialization without an expansion pack. That's interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Very very interesting. Uh. Hmm. That is a very. Curious answer from Mike. Uh, what what could be the alternative? How could they be working on the expansion in the background? I mean, uh, that do, it seems pretty conclusive. I don't see any way around that really. It's, that's a bit of a shock, a bit of a shame really. I mean, I would love another expansion, of course, uh, but maybe they're thinking that it's just not particularly worth it. Um, with with how how it was received, because I think Path of Fire perhaps wasn't received as well as they expected, and the amount of effort it took with the amount the maps get replayed probably isn't that crazy. So maybe they want to actually go back over to instead of an episodic release instead of and go straight into that. But if if that if they say that, maybe there's elite specializations coming as well, right? Because they they're, they're o only Whoa. a small part of the expansion, right? Wow. Uh, well, but I, I mean, mean yeah, the thing, it, the... it could be an expansion after um, the season five, though. To be fair. Could be. I mean, let's assume there's no expansion at all. That means that the Living World team just got doubled in size, right? Like, mm. if they drop expansions entirely, then all the people working on expansions now work on Living World as well. Mm. So, I mean, that'd be interesting as well, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it would be very, very interesting. I mean, um, it, it doesn't, yeah, like, like I said, it could mean that they are still, they do have it on the back burner a bit, but they're really focusing on getting this Living World stuff out. Um, because uh, cause I don't think he ever confirms that there is no expansion. It could be just that their main focus right now is nailing this Living Story. I mean, well, well, these kind of answers are always very difficult to interpret, but it does certainly imply a little bit worrying that, um, well, we're not worrying, but it's, it's just a bit different, I suppose. What's been the biggest change that you've seen from the outset of Living World to where Guild Wars 2 is right now? I think it's the player engagement and how much the conversation just changed. I think for season one, there was a lot of really cool epic moments that we did that changed the face of the world, but then it was gone. There was that longing to go back and revisit a lot of those things, which was part of why we moved away from that philosophy into season two. In season two, we felt that if we can keep a really quick pace, it's like there's always something new every time you log in. However, the average player wasn't necessarily able to keep up with all the updates uh, that we were doing. And we do recognize that our business model supports the idea that you can have a life. 
uh, you can go do other things and come back and enjoy the game. So moving into Season 3, we felt like the move to a three-month update allows us, us to give a meatier chunk with a much larger episode than the original two-week chunks were with more content. There are more story instances, more achievements, more open world exploration, and this just felt like a, a better grove for us to a better grove for us to do it internally for our development cadence for our players. I think that means groove. I think that's supposed yeah. to say groove there, uh, but that actually says grove. Noise. That in fact says grove, guys. Um, I, I, this is <laughs> this, this is just dem this just demonstrates that ArenaNet are sane, right? Um, yeah, it was unsustainable with regards to season one and some of season two as well. Uh, and they want to go on to like bigger TV show like episodes, like Mike Z said in the uh, in that video, the, the Guild Wars two anniversary video. It's like a TV show that you're a part of. So this this is just describing what living living world is. Uh, so yeah, there you go, there you go. Is that part of the reason Black Lion Chess changed? What? To allow players to grab items they hadn't managed to get in previous seasons. Oh, I see. They mean with the, the old story. Yeah, because they want... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, as the game matured, we are seeing that we still have new players that are coming in that weren't part of some of those early stories, those early experiences. And we still wanted to find a way to allow... So we put it in the cash shop. We, we still wanted to find a way that allowed them to still feel like they were a part of the community and weren't left out. But, though, but the more established player base has been there from the beginning, has those memories and those stories. At the end of the day, that's what this game is really about. It's about the connections that you make with other people. And it's about the idea that when you walk away from this when you're going to your dinner table <laughs> we're having a meal with your friends you can talk about the cool experiences you had that's ultimately what we want for the players there's a legacy to the franchise that we're delivering girls to that will resonate with players even after this game is done man that is just the most adorable and sweet answer ever i fucking love it okay right don't you guys say that is dot 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 or fucking haha -ha or like rp that is so fucking sweet mike z what a god dude that is honestly the sweetest thing ever. He just wants people to have good memories and experiences to talk with friends. That is so wholesome, man. What a great answer. Damn. They need to get this Mike Z guy out in the public more. This is great. A really good look for the game, I think. Uh, personally, I think it delivers it. Uh, yeah, that's great. I love that. Very good answer. Very sweet answer. And yes, it is a bit of a meme that's in the cat shop, of course. I mean, I think they do want to kind of bring some of it back in some way uh, through maybe fractals or something to let people experience it. Or maybe, I don't know, something like that. Or maybe some kind of event. Uh, but yeah, good answer. Good answer. And yeah, you can get some of the older stuff as well. And, and you can do it in like the, the, with Queen's Gauntlet and you can get like the, the sprockets, right? Yeah, sure. It's good. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Oh, ooh. Oh, Joel, thanks for the host, dude. Really appreciate it. How difficult is it to balance the game for those different types of players? All the new to the game. Oh, interesting question. Uh, I think there's two ways that we approach it. If you look at Path of Fire, it does a good job as a starting point for brand new players. You can use that as your launch point and get caught up in terms of what's going on in the overall story. Like, you feel connection to those characters. Having been there from the beginning of how the group was kind of forming, the way that the actors play off each other, the way that they play off the commander, and a lot of it can come down to just one moment for a new player to understand what Guild Wars 2 is about. It's about helping to find and create that chance for players to get in there and go, Okay, now I understand that this is different to those other shitty MMOs. Guild Wars 2 doesn't have the same vertical progression that goes beyond the level cap and doesn't go beyond that or require new gear every time a new update comes out or a new expansion. So then it really becomes about understanding how players... Wait, how players can they... Wait. So then it really becomes about understanding how players can they get to level 80. <laughs> Either using the boost or with friends and then understand the vertical progression and just having that sense of exploration and knowing that the game is really the journey. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, one, one, th this is an odd answer to that question. I, I feel like that doesn't exactly... I, I, okay, so what he's trying to say here is that they designed Heart of Thorns for veteran players, I think is what he's trying to say here. And Path of Fire is actually... So they actually intend you to boost to 80 and go straight into Path of Fire, I think. When you buy the expansion, get into that fresh content, the more it's... exploration kind of theme part ride. And that is something that people have said before, right? No so that, that does make sense. That does make sense. Um, and I, I, yeah, now that I see him say that, yeah, I can really appreciate that and see what they were trying to do with Path of Fire, uh, make it more of a casual entry point. And I think it has worked, definitely, especially with mounts, right? Um, and it's a good transition from other MMOs, right? So having stuff like, um, basically, 
like quests, I guess. Like I guess Path of Fire plays a bit more like a traditional MMO. You progress through the maps till you get to the end, almost. Like it, it's a bit um, more traditional. And then you have mounts as well, which is obviously something that a lot of MMO players are very much used to. So yeah, um, and I guess it's a lot easier. Like Path of Fire, I don't think it's nearly as threatening as Heart of Thorns. Like Heart of Thorns is kind of scary, right? And it's annoying to move around. Path of Fire is much more pleasant to navigate around, right? It's um, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. Slightly odd answer, but uh, you know, I'll take it. All right, the point at which the character boost was introduced was a point I saw the game acknowledging that new players really need a helping hand to get a foothold in the world. Was there any trepidation adding that to the game? Anytime you insert a character boost, there's a concern about being able to understand what's going on in the world. Being able to just jump into those high level zones and understand what your character, do understand your ca what your character does. This guy is bloody rubbish. Okay. Uh, a lot of Guild Wars 2 is active avoidance. My survivability is how much I can stay out of the red rings. And that's one of the things we're constantly evaluating about how we can make sure that we're doing a, a better, we're, we're better teaching the mechanics of the game and making the game more approachable, even for someone who hasn't spent a lot of time in it. Yes, exactly. This is what you need to do. But that is fascinating because I've been giving people shit advice because I've always said, no, you want to level through normally. But I think they want you to boost. Uh, they want, they, they, because I, I guess this is actually kind of what Bic said. And he's kind of right here, right? Like, the game starts at 80. So, all the leveling before that is kind of just fluff. And I can actually really see people leveling 1 to 18 kind of feeling like, is this it? Uh, to a certain extent with Guild Wars 2. Like, they won't get the shtick. Uh, they don't realize that once you get to 80, that's where the game actually starts. And you've got to uh, get your skins, legendaries, raids, fractals, um, world versus world. I mean, I guess PvP, you can do it whenever, but... And yeah, yeah, uh, uh, again, you know what's good about these answers is th is that it shows that the devs really kind of do know what they're talking about, right? Like, he, he understands the game. He knows a lot about the game and the player base, right? And the fact that they're talking about telegraphs, teaching... Because look in POF, everything's got telegraphs, AoEs. Bounties kind of teach you to don't go in the bad, right? So yeah, yeah, okay, good, good answer. Good answer. The core interior experience is terrible, and, 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 and I would say that's probably yeah. I, I I'd be tempted to think I would be tempted to agree that that's what mo that arena think. They actually think that the core leveling experience is a bit crap, is what I'm getting for this. And what do they give you on the survivability gear to make it more familiar with, say, a game like World of Warcraft? They slap a shit ton of toughness on you, so you never die. Clever, clever arena net. Yeah, yeah. Mike Zitchy knows so much. Yeah, exactly. This guy really knows his onions. He is an onion. Okay. Uh, bearing that in mind, do you feel that the game's in a good place that moving from Season 4 to Season 5 won't have a major impact on new players trying to enter the game? The thing uh, that we're going to have for us is that in Season 4, the maps are still active today because of the mastery systems and because of the achievements that are in those maps. So players who come in, even if they come in at Season 5, are still, gonna, uh, are still going to like... Wait. Are still... Are still going to like... It's going to be a continuate... What, what the fuck? It's going to be a continuation of the story we've been telling, but again, we're going to make it so it's easy to understand. Still, for the people who really who are really paying attention to, look to the law, will understand the intricacies of it, and will to be able to understand where we're coming from for the next season, where we're trying to get as well. This is what what is this? I mean, this is a shit. Uh, I mean, that, holy shit! Th 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 some of this is not exactly true. Like some of that's pretty dead because there's nothing on them. I mean, like who's playing corner? But in, in terms of achievement hunter, yeah, sure. And bear in mind, guys, you can still unlock the story for a very cheap price. Really, like you can pay some money or just grind some gold out, and you can just unlock the previous season. So it's really not a big deal, I think. Um, would if I started playing Living Story season four, would I know what was going on? Yes, because it's relatively unrelated to Kralkator, really. It's kind of an Aureen Joko meme. So you don't really need to... But then... Oh, wait. I don't need to have played Season 3, because that was ages ago. Um, season 4 just links after Path of Fire. So you, could you skip Path of Fire and go into Living Story? I mean, yeah, in theory. But can you even do that? I don't know if you can, actually. But either way, I mean, it's, it's, it's all good, right? Uh, yeah, I think they can do this. I don't see why not. They can have, this, they can have the stories have links, but not be completely conjoined right they can be separate but linked and yeah I, I don't see why not yeah sure uh if you if you if you jumped in mid-season you might get a bit confused but other than that yeah it, it makes sense yeah yeah sure all right next page okay players 
that have been invested in the lore obviously hate their own favorite characters. Oh, have their own favorite characters, not hate, sorry. <laughs> Which of the characters have seen the biggest change during Living World, in your opinion? Biggest change! I don't really know for sure, but the two that come to immediately in mind are Braham and Timey! <laughs> Wait, I love how he talks about this. You saw them as individuals at the very beginning. In Timey, it was just kind of this little runt who was trying to squirm away into Lion's Arch and was trying to say that Bram was a guardian to the original Lion Guards way back in the day. What? What a... <laughs> I love this guy. All right. You saw that friendship... You, you saw that friendship... A you saw that friendship a kind of develop over... In this last season, you saw... You saw a tiny come through, very horrific. You, what, what, what is this? You saw tiny, what you mean is you saw Timey come through very horrific moments and things that have changed her life. There are subtle things that you will now see about her. Uh, like she no longer has a cockpit dome on the golden clothes. It's always open now because, oh, cause she's scared of suffocating, holy shit. Cause when it tried to suffocate her, with Bram you saw her, so obviously with his mom's death, there was a storyline for Bram as he tried to find a way for Grieve that's kind of been a, um, a thrill that we've been telling. Oh, I mean, that's a bit ambitious, honestly. Like, Bram's been a bit of a, a nothing nothing, but, you know, if you say so. Uh, both of these that's characters be... will continue to have more of that evolution. Uh, Timey obviously has picked up a couple of new friends with Gorok and Blish, but at the same time you're seeing that growth. We didn't, think, we didn't want things to stagnate. We didn't want characters to just be on the screen because they've been there the entire time. <laughs> uh, we we want to make sure that we can flow the cast in and out because there's a story length. Oh uh, yeah, well, there's a story length for them uh, to help in or because they were part of something. So yeah 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 yeah. I, I get exactly what he's saying here. He's saying that they don't want to address all the characters all at the same time. Um, and yeah, that does kind of come off a bit odd sometimes when some of them get discarded for a while. But yeah, I don't think they are doing that. And you know what? To be fair, I'm gonna take off my cynical hat. They have done a good job with Timey, right? And Bram does do some interesting things, actually, um, with his kind of rage quest. And now he's, he's, you know, now he's a bit over it, right? Uh, and Timey, yes, has developed well. That is true. Uh, she's much less annoying now. That is that is real. And they've actually given us some proper character development instead of just a Mary Sue. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, there, he's right. This is correct. Um, and the characters do develop. And we actually are seeing some character development recently. Uh, could it be better? Yeah, sure, probably. Um, but... No, it's definitely pretty good. The story they're doing right now and the, the way the characters interact and the characters develop is the best they've ever done. That is true. That is true, guys. Okay, right, here we go. Marjorie and Casimir, for example. Casimir were there in Path of Fire and we felt like, and we felt like did a good job with that. Sorry. She was bloody rubbish. She was annoying. Well, I mean, I suppose they did that whole kind of God meme, so... It felt okay to move her away from the main spotlight so we could focus on these other characters for a while and get to know kind of the, the harshness that they're going through. In some ways, as the commander or the player character, you don't necessarily have that same emotional journey uh, that some of these uh, other characters are. So we allow you to kind of live through the triumphs and the tribulations that these characters are having. We allow you along, uh, allow you to be alongside them, help them with their challenges, and then we do throw the occasional twist in there, like Joko's monologue at the end of episode three. Yeah, so, yeah, what he's uh, saying here is, is that... Um, they, they deliberately don't d develop the character, the player character as much. Which is, you know what? Guys, a bit of a throwback Tuesday, guys. This is basically what JP was saying, actually. Uh, that they do this on purpose, so you put yourself in the character, right? So you do things that you would do instead of having a deliberate direction. Which I think is a good way of doing it. Uh, it's, I think what they would need is more branching dialogue options to make it actually work a bit better. But... Definitely still doable. Uh, she was I'm right. not joking. I'm not joking. You think <laughs> Deroyera was right, man? I mean, I think if they had more options for that, like for example, like the ending speech you give at Path of Fire is just hilarious to me. That's just such a fucking meme. And then at the start, where you could pick if you wanted to side with Joker, I obviously immediately sided with Joker, right? Um, yeah, that, that sort of thing is pretty good, I think. Uh, and yeah, you live through the characters, and, and the way they were saying about moving Casimir away, I don't think I entirely agree with that. I think they probably should have done something, right? The fact that they've done nothing is a bit excessive, and, and this is where I would slightly disagree with what Mike is saying here. So <laughs> I, I think it's fine to do what they're doing. In fact, I think it's correct. I think, that, I think this is absolutely correct, that they, they, they rotate the characters so they can develop them all. But the thing is, I feel like they leave them to die for ages, right? They leave them in the dust. I mean, how long was it until they developed rocks, right? And they didn't even do shit. Like, all she did is, like, she was role-playing with these, oh, these Olmacans, oh, yeah, oh, there's Char, oh, they're cats too, yeah, oh. And that's, uh, yeah. And Bram, I mean, honestly, like, the Bram kind of edgy teen meme, I, I think you could, you, there's an argument to be made that is kind of funny and, and 
arguably interesting, right? But it just comes off as he's a bit of a dickhead. But maybe that's on purpose, so there you go. All right. Oh, aha! Now Elizabeth comes in. Okay. It can be pretty difficult, after all, to do this over the course of a single expansion. You're trying to tell a story and deliver a compelling character arc over the course of maybe 15 to 30 hours that a player may be rushing through. Live with, with Living World, if you're revisiting people over the course of several months, it feels like they have time to breathe and grow. But you're also checking in with them regularly, so regular players are going to be able to follow that development. Oh yeah, exactly. This is just um, reiterating what Mike is saying here, basically. They, they, um, they realize that they don't have a crazy amount of time to actually tell this story, especially if people don't read all the little tidbits and go through all the dialogue. So yeah, I think this is true. Uh, they do have a bit of a tricky situation um, that they don't have a lot of time. Like six episodes is not a lot to tell a story, which is why they dispose of Joko so soon. So occasionally it can feel rushed, I think. So yeah, sure. All right. The pace Next of change has shifted over the years. Do you feel that ArenaNet is at a good point with the pace of updates now? Okay, all right. If he mentions raids gonna be sad no okay mike i think we're close if you look at the last couple of updates they came through uh they, they came out a little bit over the three month mark and i think that was due to us as we moved into season three we tried to streamline various things and we looked into season four we realized that we were not as efficient as we could be so we had to spend some time building those logistical gates and legwork underneath that allowed us to move into a more streamlined process so my hope is that you can expect it to be much closer to two months in the months moving forward but we you know Obviously, we have that leg room <laughs> here just in case. <laughs> At the end of the day, I need to make sure that the quality of these episodes is going to be something the fans are going to be proud of and that we as a company are going to be proud of. If we need to take that extra week or two, I don't want there to be a concern. It's more about us wanting to make sure that we've got it just right because everything has been progressing and becoming bigger and becoming more grandiose in terms of telling our story. Things have been ramped up. Uh... And we've also got, I think, a stronger narrative that we've been telling now uh, than we have in some of the previous seasons. The voice acting has also risen to the challenge as well. Timey's voice art. <laughs> no! No, Mike! Debbie Derryberry has been phenomenal for us to be able to take that emotional art with that character. No! So all this, kind of, <laughs> seeing all this kind of go together has just been, in, it just, just been incredible, guys. It's been, been incredible. Um, yeah, uh, Mike! I'm just gonna say it, dude, that you're gonna regret this. My hope is you can expect it much closer to two months, to be much close to two months in the months moving forward. You're gonna regret that, buddy, okay? You're really gonna regret that. Yeah, well, uh, yeah you... say that. Oh, <laughs> oh my <God>. stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, you, ooh, yeah, you're gonna wish you didn't say that one. Um, <laughs> Trailer <laughs> next week? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Do Come I on, wish, twice. do I wish <laughs> that is true? Hell yeah, okay? Do I want to believe my boy, my new best friend, Mike Z? Yes, I do. Do I think it will happen? No. I don't know, Kevin. I'm going to have to go with a, a no on that one. Um, I really wish it would, though. If that... If, guys, if think about it. That explains season five. If it's two months per episode, then season five would only take a year, right? Because it's... Because it's two, it'd be two months per episode, six episodes. Boom, year. Then it goes straight into the expansion, guys. Think about it. Season four ends... Kind of at the start of next year. Boom! Expansion released next year. Easy. Kind of ish. But there you go. Not all of the changes are around character and story. How has the change in the cadence impacted your ability to bring in new tech? Like the recent weather tech updates. The two week cadence must have been crushing for that. <laughs> When we were doing the two-week cycle, it was more about understanding when tech was going to come online. It was a little bit harder to plan around because we couldn't put ourselves in a situation where there was a dependency that... There, so that, for example, no episode four of season two needed something, but it was going to come online at the very last moment or even miss that cycle. By going more to this longer cadence, we now have programmers that are embedded in each of the content teams who can do small minor tech updates, who do things like the wind tech and the brand song stuff that you're talking about. We can get some of the smaller improvements done on the side because the engine is extremely flexible. <laughs> uh, while we have our main gameplay programming group that's working on bigger tech and bigger features like the movement physics for the roller beetle. Okay. For some of the more casual players that haven't really experienced the... Oh, I, I suppose I should probably say something about this, but I mean, I, I don't really have much to say on this, actually. Um... This just means that they can they can do cool gimmicks more, and it was really hard when it was two weeks, but now it's easier because then they have better resource assignments. So yeah, okay. Uh, they're flexible and meaty. Oh yeah, dude. 
Uh, for some of the more casual players that haven't really experienced the previous seasons, including season one, are you looking at some way to allow them to pick up that as a bundle or experience, at a bundle or experience the previous content? Nothing I can talk about at this point. Uh, it is one of those things that we're always investigating in terms of how we could have a better place variance uh, for a player that's been around since the beginning uh, from the betas to a player who starts tomorrow. It's something we're aware of, aware in trying to figure out uh, how to balance the game experience. Yeah, this is kind of exactly what um, you would expect. Of course, you can't say something like that. Uh, but I think it would be awesome if they could somehow re-implement it in some kind of festival, like a, a history-themed festival. Something like that would be great, I think. So, yeah. I mean, just standard answer there. One of the more surprising reactions to character development I saw was the community pushback to Braham. Did you expect that response? <laughs> with any release with any online game, you always expect the unexpected. Sometimes we're trying to be subtle and sometimes it really doesn't hit home and then we're a bit more obvious with it just to get the message through and get understanding of what's going on. In Bram's particular case, I think we're going into a very interesting dilemma because how you grieve and how people grieve is very different. There's also a little bit of cultural bias there as well in terms of how you actually celebrate or mourn the loss of a loved one. And so that was definitely something where we had a long-term plan and we wanted to make sure that we could see it through to the end. We understood where some of the outrage came from. Uh, maybe wouldn't necessarily expect as much of the outrage that was going to happen. Wait, what? Um, oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, 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 I see what they're saying. It was one of those things where everybody grieves differently. Oh, why, why, what? What? I, I don't. What is this question? Like, what even is this? Uh, wait, was there a massive community pushback to this? Uh, what? This is what. This isn't to what people were. Com this isn't what people were complaining about with Bren. He was like, "Ooh, ooh, I'm so moody and edgy." That was what people didn't like, right? Yeah. A lot of people. A lot of what we do in terms of how we build characters is from personal experience and how we experience the world. Not everyone sees the world in the same way, so I can understand why some people felt he was being extremely emotional and going off down the dark path. Well, it's because he was. That's kind of the road that we wanted to go. Yeah, there you go, because we need to show him as a character. He needed to have that struggle that went to his very core and rocked the foundation of what he understood for himself as a Norn, as part of that culture for him as a member of Dragon's Watch. Yeah, okay. Um, th this is just a... I, I, okay, okay. I don't really have much to say about that. If people didn't like a character, but isn't that kind of the point? Like some, aren't some characters there to be like, oh, what a dickhead, right? You don't have to love every character. So, I mean, I don't think, was it outrage? I don't think it was outrage, was it? I think that would be a bit, even for the Guild Wars 2 community, that would be a bit over the top, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, there you go. At what point did you decide that rather than live through the experience of these characters, that you would take the decision of having the player character kill Scarlet, taking a massive moral choice out of the player's hands. Well, right, MMORPG, this is a video game where you butcher thousands of people daily. I mean, I don't think it's a big deal. It's not a massive moral choice. Look, if you, if you go into, like, one of the first things you do if you play as a human character is, like, commit bandit mass murder, and they're not as bad as Scarlet, and you just kill them. I mean, <laughs> like, burn them to death. You burn Kill them. them. Ah, hello, Ben. We're we're reading various interviews, and I like them. They're very good. Okay. Uh, I believe it was uh, for the last four episode arc of for Scarlet. It was really when we decided to turn that character around. I believe we took a bit of a hiatus to be able to tell that story. That again, that was one of those things where we had this larger story arc that was very subtle about Scarlet building her forces. It almost became like a monster of the week. It didn't get there, but it was getting in that vein of becoming too cartoonish. Uh, yeah, so he, he's saying why they wanted to get rid of her, right? Um, because it was getting like, aha, it was Scarlet again! Uh, we gave her a specific character arc in terms of what she was trying to do, and then we laid in complexity. Right now, uh, that we've had two plus years to go back and look at her actions and what led to that moment. She became a much deeper character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they they, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Damn, Mike Z really knows what he's talking about. God damn. Okay, she, um, yeah. It wasn't always that villain that was just coming around every week and saying, I'm going to take over the world. It became more about understanding her visions, being potentially uh, touched by Mordremoth, and more that influence meant to her, realizing what the Silvari were and the danger this person was God damn, seriously. Uh, Mike Z. He knows everything. Give this man a pay rise, seriously. That is really... Some of his answers are so good. All of them are, really, actually. Wow. You should have met him in Cologne. Well, I met him last year. Yeah, but this time he was memeing about the Doom Free event. He... <laughs> yeah. Um, no joke, I, you, you know, some, sometimes... Um, so, sometimes in the game, right, it does seem that the... the Arena is accused of being out of touch. And it does sometimes feel like that. But when you see something like this, you think, wow, that's really not true, is it? Um, yeah, this guy really knows everything. 
about the game. He he understands it very well. What and he and look, look at the way he explains his decisions here, guys. Like, this I, I don't want to jerk off Ring it too much because people are going to call me a shill, right? But damn, like, look at the way he answers this, right? He he basically subtly says that yeah, like we realized something was going very wrong. Okay, then he gives a very exact answer with what they did and why they did it with regards to Scarlet. Yes, very good. Very good. So they say, ah, yes, uh, we, we realized we made a bit of a bit of a bit of an error that was setting into a clown fiesta. So we use the story later on to go back and flesh out the character. Yeah, nice. Good. Paid shill. Shill payment. No, uh, Ben, you got do it off stream, man. <laughs> can't be doing that here. All right. But yeah, 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 yeah. A great answer. Seriously. My man, Mike Z. What a guy. Uh, yeah. Very good. Uh, over the last four seasons of Living World, do you have any personal highlights? I've been working on Living World since almost the beginning. I think there's a couple of moments I, uh, that I, I still stand out for me. A couple of, I think there's a couple of moments I still stand out for me. And they fall <laughs> under the extended Living World umbrella. The introduction of Super Adventure Box, it wasn't part of the storyline, but it was a lot of fun when we were doing it. The creativity that came with, uh, that came from the teamwork on that was incredible. The giant marionettes fight, ooh, he likes the marionettes fight, huh? And the Vine Wrath. Okay. Okay, who likes the Vine Wrath, seriously? Uh, <laughs> because that was one of the first times that we tried to create such organized gameplay experience. I think in a lot of ways, the Silver Voice led to a lot of the core competencies that we built in Tower of Thorns. I think that's absolutely right. That's definitely cor the correct. If you look at the way that event is structured, and it, it, Marionette as well, to a certain extent, with how it works in Heart of Thorns, that's absolutely right. Uh, I'm actually playing 12 seasons in my head right now, and I have to highlight the feeling of Lake Doric. The conflict between the centaurs, the White Mantle, and Logan's, Logan's foursomes was something that really captured the sum of everything that you were doing from the personal. Uh, it was all supportive of the greater conflict, and then we got to go go in the back door at Cornicus's Manor, which, and that was always fun to do. You are a cheeky boy, Mike, aren't you? You really are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he is a cheeky lad. He goes in the back door, huh? Uh, <laughs> back door at CM, boys. Okay. Yeah. Hey, around. Hey. All right. Yeah, Mike is in. He's in the ERP scene, dude. He's in the ERP scene. I like that. He's got more legendaries than me, dude. He's got his rack. He's kicking my ass. All Man, right. Does he have? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, well, he probably has all of them, right? D ben, does does Mike have all legendaries? You know what? Stuff like this, this interview, uh, even though some of the words are not in the right order, okay? That isn't Mike's fault. I don't think he actually said it like that. This actually should inspire confidence in you, right? If, if Mike is at the, if Mike is at the wheel, okay, and he's steering it, okay, steering the ship, I think that if nothing else, he's going to try his best to push it in the right direction, okay? This fills me with confidence, actually. The way he's able to talk about the game. He, he obviously very... He understands the player base very well. And he understands the game very well. And he also knows everything about the game. Uh, so, yes. Big shout out to Mike Z. Hopefully he hears about this. Because, yeah, he, I, I think this is great for Arena. This, this makes the leadership look very good. Right? Seeing as he's, he's, he's the big man. He's the big man. This makes them look very good. And this made them look good too as well. This interview with Mike Z from PC Games N. And this thing, I also like this thing as well. It was a bit of a meme when they were talking about raids. Uh, <laughs> but it made them look good. And I like that they teased something extra here as well. I actually think player housing is going to be very, very lucrative for them. Especially if they sell like chairs and shit. Uh, yeah, that's going to be very good. So, yeah, I think ArenaNet have actually... They're, guys, they've done some proper PR here, okay? This is some proper marketing. Uh, yes. Good job, ArenaNet. Good job, ArenaNet. Well done. Uh, yeah. Nice.